Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood dungeon master and this week I'm gonna show you guys how not to craft a swamp terrain base. Stick around. So thanks for coming back everybody. Um, this week's project was, whew, man, I had some, I had a hard time with this one. Um, I messed up a lot and I included all of my mistakes so that you guys could see what I did, what I did wrong. Um, this is, this was probably my most ambitious project to date. I've never done anything quite so ambitious, especially with materials and paint scheme. And I put a lot of work into this and um, I guess the ambition was that I was going to either make it or break it with this water feature and man, I nearly broke it and it still looks okay, but it didn't come out as good as I would have liked and you'll see why uh, coming up in the video. So uh, stick around and I'll show you guys how I made this. Uh, this is part one of a two part video, by the way. Uh, this was supposed to be all one video, but I ran out of time because I ran into trouble. Just stick around and you'll see what I mean. So I started by marking my MDF base. Um, I measured the underside of my turtle and oversized it to get the dimensions, which ended up being about uh, six by 10. So this base is uh, cut to that dimension and then beveled. This time I decided it would be best if I outlined the portion of the base that I wanted to uh, sand so I had a little bit more of a template to go with instead of uh, doing it just haphazardly randomly. I, I change my mind every time I do something but this is what felt right to me this time in this instance so this is what I did. You can see here I'm using my belt sander and I'm just using the, the rounded edge of the belt sander to uh, get into the round edges of the base and uh, take care of the curves and bevel and stuff like that. And I then uh, put my turtle miniature on the, uh, the base and marked uh, the facing direction as well as uh, marking where his feet would go for placing the land masses underneath him. And I decided to take some cork uh, to use here instead of uh, foam. You could use uh, dollar store foam core for this part if you wanted to. I decided to go for the cork because of the way that the jagged edges on it look when you rip it up. Uh, and I just cut out bits of this and glued it to the base using some super glue over where I had put the markings for the turtle's feet. This uh, gives a more realistic uh, ground texture or shape kind of you know random outline than doing the foam in my opinion. Uh, I think that this works the best out of uh, the materials I've seen used. Since I so rarely ever plan ahead that far in my builds, um, I kind of go over things again and again and tweak them until they're right. So here I did some of my 50-50 PVA glue water mix and uh, some sand, but I ended up going back in, which you'll see here in a second, and covering the base again using um, drywall filler. Um, and I ended up missing the recording on that so I apologize for that, but I covered it in um, drywall filler, or uh, what do you call it, uh, joint compound, and covering it in a little bit more sand for a little bit more texture. This is, gave it such a fantastic texture, such a good way to do it. And um, then I ended up just spraying it down afterwards using some uh, watered down PVA glue to seal it. I covered it in a gray primer first to help seal a little bit and give it a kind of a, a dead-ish undercoat 
And then when I went over it again with the brown, I just used a light coating of the brown and only one coat. I didn't go overboard with it. And this kind of uh, gave it a more uh, gray brown, obviously, than uh, just spray painting the brown on, or in this case, the espresso, which is a color that I like to use for uh, base coating earth. And this was perhaps one of the most fun portions of the build for me, uh, was experimenting some with my airbrush, which is a very, very inexpensive, uh, cheap testers brand airbrush, which I'm, I'm not overly fond of. I'd much prefer to have a gravity-fed airbrush than a siphon-feed airbrush, and I actually bought one this weekend that I can't wait to try out. I just haven't gotten it yet. Um, but this one worked fine. It's It just clogs up really easily. It doesn't atomize well, and it uh, it jams up the tip where the where the paint comes out tends to get clogged really easily, and it probably has a lot to do with my mixture, but um, once I get the mixture sorted out, it tends to run fine. And I just hooked this up to my household air compressor and turned the pressure down real low to about 25, and it sprays really well at that level. It's just a pain to clean, and I'm not overly fond of it. So I coated the base with that using several different layers of um, paint. I used a dark olive green and a light olive green. And now in this shot here, I'm doing a dry brushing of a very light gray. And this really brought out kind of like the wasteland, dead, swamp look that I was going for. It was very uh, aesthetically pleasing at this point. Once I dry brushed it, it looked really nice. I wanted to add some grass to it, so um, out again came the PVA glue mixture. And then I just uh, sprinkled some Woodland Scenics burnt grass on here. Um, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you guys want to pick up some. Um, it works out really well to, um, to give that dead marsh kind of color, um, especially this burnt grass color. Well, I usually do a mixture, but since we're going for like a dead earth uh, scene kind of here, this really was just the color to go with. And after I did that, I let the grass dry for a little bit and then went back and sealed it with some more of the glue, letting the capillary action of the dry, now dried grass suck the glue into it. And this really solidifies the grass onto the uh, base. And another thing I used was some of my Army Painter uh, Wasteland Tufts. And again, I'll leave the um, links to some of these materials in the description below so you guys can get some for yourself. These things looked, um, these really brought the base together. They started to make it look really, really nice. And um, I was a little disappointed coming up. You're gonna see why. Um, I actually almost destroyed this. And I didn't, and I ended up saving it in the end, but I almost destroyed this all this work that I did. As you can see, I didn't have any of the larger uh, wasteland tufts for this, which is a shame. Um, I hoped I had a few left, but I didn't. And I didn't order any in time for this video. But um, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was add some tall grass. And um, I have some, I wanted to add some tall grass. And I have some hemp rope here that I'm just uh, taking apart. I'm taking apart the strands. Like uh, back when I did my uh, trees video and um, I'm taking out the bushy bits and just trying to leave myself with the, the straight strands here. And all that I'm going to do is just tease them to get them kind of straight and take out the stuff that comes away. I'm not trying to make these anything kind of perfect, but I got a, about a two inch section here. I'm just going to cut it down. I'm going to cut it in half. And now I've got a much thicker grass tuft here. I've just got some painter's tape. I'm going to wrap painter's tape around it. Oops, closer to the bottom. I want to have the bottom 
bound uh, semi-tightly. Not too tight, it doesn't have to be, you know, completely compacted. Um, and I'm gonna trim it up, flatten it, just like that. Oops. Actually, I have to trim my tape back a little bit because I cut it too, too close. There we go. I want just a little bit exposed on the bottom here because I'm gonna dip it in some glue and make my own tall grass tuft. Kind of like reeds or whatever. And that should do the trick. I only need a couple of these. I already made uh, another one before. I don't want to overdo it. I might make one or two more, but then that'll be it. The hardest part of attaching these uh, tufts to the base was getting them to stand upright. They're a little heavier than the usual kind of uh, purchasable ones, but I mean they look good so who the hell cares. I just I had to use what I had to use in order to uh, get it to work. And um, I slept on that at that point. That was me going to sleep for the night after that. and. Um, the next day I woke up and I, th I thought, you know, kind of while laying around in bed and waiting to fall asleep, oh, some skulls would look really nice in this underneath, uh, you know, the planned uh, water feature that I had to put in there. So I cut up some of my Citadel skulls um, and painted those up. Using my pin vise, I decided to drill small holes in the undersides of the skulls to support them with pins while I painted them. Uh, this was something I'd never done before, but I've seen done uh, a bunch of times. And I thought, uh, now's as good a time as any to try it. And this enabled me to hit these tiny pieces from every angle and not leave all that big of a hole on the underside, which could be fixed in the end if you absolutely needed it to with uh, perhaps some liquid green stuff or some super glue and baking soda. I just drilled the small holes, uh, tipped the, uh, the flathead pins in some super glue, and then stuck them into the, uh, into the miniatures before placing them into my poster tack. This helped uh, give me a good handhold on them while also having a good 360 degree view of them while working on them. I base coated these in red, um, not for any particular reason, but because I didn't want to use household spray paint on the minis uh, for primer, and this red was the only color of acceptable, in my opinion, acceptable miniature primer that I had left. So I decided to use this. And I'm gonna base coat them in Corax White, uh, which is the appropriate undercoat, as far as I know, for using the contrast uh, paints, the Citadel contrast paints. Uh, you can use it with any light colored paint, but I wanted to try the Corax White because I thought that that would look, uh, how they bring out the colors, how they were designed to look. Um, which I it came out a little thick, so I thinned it down with um, a homemade uh, thinning medium, which I got the I got the recipe from uh, Luke's APS, which I'll post in a, the description below, so you can check out his video on how to do that.
and next I'm going to hit it with the contrast paint. Um, and since these are skulls, I'm going with Skeleton Horde, which is, as far as I can tell, just basically a really thick bodied sepia wash. So you could get away with doing a white wash and a sepia or even a thinned down, very light brown paint, which would work perfectly for this. But this this just looks so much better. The finish on them is so much better. And I really like, I, re I love, actually, I really love these contrast paints. I think they're amazing. Okay, folks, lesson number one here. Do not use PVA as a resin dam, especially when you've got plaster on your terrain piece. I learned this the hard way. Uh, as you can see here, I had to go back and paint it, and not just one time. I messed up multiple times on this piece and had to paint it again several times. And uh, when I said earlier that I almost ruined this project, this was the first time that I almost ruined it, and I rescued it from this. Uh, but you'll see again here in a little bit, I repeat some mistakes that I shouldn't have repeated and had to do it again. And I did the exact same thing, except I did it with poster tack, which was Eileen's tacky poster tack, which is really freaking sticky. And it did the exact same thing. Only after this one, I thought this would work a lot better. I poured the resin and after the resin cured, well, you'll see what happens. I used some EasyCraft casting resin that I got at Michael's, which is fine. It just takes a long time to dry. It takes about 24 hours to dry thoroughly and mixed it with just the slightest amount, just a tiny drop of the uh, olive paint to give the water, uh, the olive tint, the murky look to it, which worked out really well. Um, but as you can see here in the following shot, things did not go so well. We had leaks and there were, um, you can see the extra poster tack that I had to put on the outside and this only made the situation worse. Um, I decided to sprinkle some tea leaves into the water to give it a little bit of some vegetation and give my tufts a little bit of a dry brushing. And then I decided I was gonna cut away the, the stuff here and I really had to cut it away. I had, I'm glad that this resin has, you know, about the time it's halfway dry, it's workable you can still cut it you can still do things to it before it gets rock solid and I actually had to trim the resin to get the poster tack off and I ended up wasting almost a whole package of poster tack as well as almost ruining my uh, base here so in the future I would definitely do a different way of damming off the resin I would probably use tape of some kind or maybe make the edge of the base uh, flat and not tapered until I get the water down or maybe even put the base, uh, the, the water feature sunken into the base, which I was going for a, a much different look. I tried to get the outside to look right. You can see here I'm using my Dremel in an attempt to clean it up and bevel the edge of the water to try to blend it into the base. And I really did everything that I could to bring this back to looking somewhat decent. And here it just, it looks absolute rubbish. And I was very unhappy with it at this point. Um, I was really enjoying it up until here. It looked really good, but I had to paint it all again. And I did the, the border here. I painted it brown, green, gray, the same colors, but I wasn't really happy with how it turned out. So I ended up uh, breaking out the air, airbrush again and painting it up again on the outside. Another mistake that I made was using alcohol on the water's surface. Uh, this ended up making it very cloudy, and since I did a lot of the work on the water when the water feature was still tacky, I ended up getting dust stuck in it, I got fingerprints on it. it this was really tricky to do, and I, I learned a lot doing it, but at the expense of my project, nearly. It still looks alright, and you out there in 
YouTube land may say, no, Matster, it looks okay. Don't worry about it. You did a good job. But at the same time, I'm, I'm going to be my own worst critic and just say, no, screw that. I could have done a lot better. Um, and next time I will. And the last thing to do was to just come in with some of my green paint and uh, touch up some of the white plaster spots that showed through under the resin. And here's our finished product. And you can see the edge of the resin uh, that I had to try to clean up. I do love the detail of the earth um, on the small patches of land. They, all of this did really come out pretty good. Thank you so much everybody for sticking around. Uh, if you'd like to help out the channel, I included a lot of affiliate links down below for this uh, this week's episode. There's a lot of materials that went into making this particular piece. And if you'd like to get yourself some stuff to make a project of your own and help support the channel at the same time, those are a great way to do that. Um, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, uh, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate that also. That helps the channel grow. I put all of the money that I get from Patreon back into the channel. I use it to buy paints, materials, and other stuff um, outside of using my own money. If you want to help the channel out in other ways, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and um, if you guys have any tips or pointers for how to do a better job at this kind of stuff, I'd love that. This was my first foray into this kind of in-depth terrain. All of this stuff is kind of very new to me, and I'm kind of learning as I go and uh, taking you guys along with me. Next week, we're going to add this guy. Yeah, that's right. We're going to add this guy to our uh, terrain base and have a little bit of a scene going on there. So stick around for that. That, and we'll uh, we'll show you guys how I did that next time. I've been your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. Take care.